Hiya, Circle. Who here has been through a meltdown? That'll get you battle-hardened for the day, won't it? Let's see. Get in a cage match at the next wrestling superstar event or face a meltdown. I'll take the cage match, please, uh, with a side of ladders and chairs. Now would be a good time to point out that not everyone with autism has meltdowns. Now, I don't want to start a stereotype here. They say that if you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. It's a wide spectrum, and every person is unique in his or her own way. For this video, though, it's a common enough theme that it warrants some conversation in our circle. One of the most important truths that I wish everyone out there knew about meltdowns is the fact that they're just as hard, if not harder, for the person going through it as it is for the person facing it. You can play that again. You know, John doesn't want to have meltdowns any more than I want him to, which is not at all. It's not healthy in any way. It stresses him out. He's exhausted afterwards. The remorse he feels once it's over is usually immense, and he's embarrassed. I mean, you could look at him during one and say, he's being an ass. He's being an ass. But how would you feel if you were making an ass out of yourself and couldn't control it? So if the person with autism doesn't want to have meltdowns, and you don't want them to have meltdowns, why do they happen? And how do we avoid them? I'd be lying to you if I were to say that all meltdowns are avoidable. The truth is, this very topic can make me feel unworthy of doing these videos, simply because sometimes no matter what I do or what John does, they still happen. And then there are times when I should have known how to prevent or stop one, but I simply didn't for one reason or another. Maybe it's because I didn't see the signs in time, or because I mistakenly felt that it's a tantrum as opposed to a meltdown. And heck, let's admit it, sometimes I lose my own temper and don't act as rationally as I should. But regardless of all the mistakes we make, and regardless of the fact that meltdowns are frequently a part of autism that's simply unavoidable, we owe it to ourselves and to those on the spectrum to never give up, to be as understanding as we can be, and to help them and ourselves as much as possible. So with that, let's take a look at some steps we can take to avoid them to the best of our abilities. Here at our house, we try to avoid meltdowns way in advance by making sure John knows what to expect as soon as possible, and by allowing him to help set the parameters of what to expect. Haircuts are never fun, but by allowing him to pick the date, and by reminding him of when the haircut is scheduled, he has control over his circumstances and has time to prepare. Don't get me wrong, he's usually not in a good mood on the day of the haircut, and he typically tries to wriggle out of it. Let's do it next week. But more often than not, we're able to get his haircut with only minor grumbling. Now, this doesn't only apply to haircuts. If our ever important man day is to be affected, I let him know in advance and give him the opportunity to dictate how we'll make up for it. Within reason, of course. And sometimes, it's about giving him choice when there is no choice. A dentist visit usually goes something like this. Okay, buddy, you have a dentist visit tomorrow at noon. What would you like to do when we're done? Our favorite two words in this house are affirm and redirect. Battling him head on never works. You have to go to school tomorrow whether you like it or not is a surefire way to get the meltdown train started towards Explosionville. Affirming what he says, though, and then redirecting him to safer grounds almost always leads to good results. I know you don't want to go to school tomorrow, buddy. Do you want to get ice cream when I pick you up? You see, sometimes part of the problem is communication. Remember, that's an aspect of autism, too. I'm not going to school tomorrow! Doesn't necessarily mean they aren't willing to go to school tomorrow. It can just as easily mean, I'm upset, and I don't know how to express it, so I'll say this. Affirm it! I know you're not, buddy. What happened today? Will oftentimes lead to a conversation rather than a fight. Teach them to use better words. I'll never forget a time Jella took John to the doctor. Now, for whatever reason, he came out of the doctor's office rip-roaring mad. On the way out, he says to her, I'm never getting in the car again! Now, rather than fighting him or getting angry back, she simply replied, Okay, John. Uh, would you like to start that before I drive you home or after? He, of course, got into the car. Sometimes you just have to go with it. Which leads me to my next point. Try to control your own anger. Screw you. All of us, myself included, struggle with this sometimes. Keeping calm will not only help to prevent a meltdown, it will also go a long way towards making it more manageable and ending it quicker if there is one. Not to mention, it leaves both of you less drained afterwards. Lead by example and model the behavior you want him or her to show. Now, this won't end the meltdown, but it will help them in the future. Affirm what they're saying, and keep in mind, this is autism. Don't try to reason with them. They just don't get it when they're in this state. Don't try to trick them or outthink them. you got to remember, they're in their own world, and they're always right and always win in their own world. Just keep calm and go with the flow. In judo, 
you're taught how to take down opponents much bigger than yourself. You don't do this by going at them head on. You do it by moving with them. If they want to move forward, that's fine. We'll move forward. Just go wherever they're taking you in a calm, controlled, and relaxed manner. Be a black belt in patience! Now I've said all that, and I've no doubt it will go right out the window the next time you're cussed out and told how much you're failing. But over time, you will develop the mental and emotional muscle you need to take it in stride and move forward. Most of the time. Two last pieces of advice. One, pick and choose your battles. You want to teach your child right from wrong, and want to help them develop character as much as possible so that they know they can't go through life always getting their own way. But if you're going to do or say something that you know will cause a meltdown, make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. And finally, take the time after every single meltdown to teach the person the right way to handle a situation. Oftentimes, they'll already be feeling guilty or ashamed of their actions, so don't make them feel worse. But do spend some time explaining the importance of using better words to express themselves. And they need to be taught how to handle situations in an appropriate manner. This step is crucial for future success in not only preventing meltdowns, but also in helping a person with autism function in society. Now, I know there's a lot more that can be said on the subject, so feel free to leave a comment if you have anything to add, and share this video! You can find us on YouTube and on Facebook. Autism, some assembly required. See you next week, Circle. Bye!